The Saxons are the most mysterious group of European tribes. The self-name of this people has been hidden for centuries. Modern historians have isolated their name from written sources, peoples with neighboring territories with the Saxons. Presumably the tribes got their name from a short knife, which was constantly at hand for each member of the tribe, Sax. Since the Saxons for a long time did not have a single ruler, the most important and significant issues were decided by the meeting of the tribes. It was held on the bank of the Weser River in Marklo. Now there is the municipality of Marklo in Lower Saxony in modern Germany. Note that the Saxons never represented a single nation, but were divided into three tribes. Westphalians, translated as Western people or Western Saxons, lived in the territories between the Rhine and the Weser. Ostphalians, translated as Eastern people, lived in the territories between the Weser and Elbe. Engras were located right in the center of the Saxons' territory on the banks of the Weser River. Who are the Saxons and what is their role in world history? Let us tell you everything in order. Although all the tribes of the Saxons had much in common with each other, the Engras always stood out, and not only in appearance. The most important difference from all other tribes was the worship of water, not Mother Earth. So as a deity Engras chose the river Wesera. As a result, some scientists, specialists in the history of the Saxons, put forward the assumption that the Engras had common roots with thino lugard tribes. From this point of view comes out and the assumption of another meaning of the word Saxon, and accordingly the origin of the etymology of the name of the tribes. From the profino ugric language the word saxa slash taxa is translated as to come, and hence accordingly the name of the tribes saxa means newcomers. Since some scientists assume the presence of common ancestors at Engers and Ungers, there is a certain probability of arrival to the territory of Angles from Ingria, that is the Chutsky lands from the territory around the Neva River. On the territory of the northern Black Sea coast live Tafels. Presumably, it is the fourth group of tribes united by a single name Saxons. Tafels were displaced by Huns in the second half of the 4th century, crossed the Danube, and fought with Emperor Valentine on the side of the Visigoths. The original territory of the Saxons in the lands of modern Germany, the lands in the basin of the Elbe River, the federated lands of Schleswig-Holstein, were called Nordalbingia. The peoples inhabiting these lands for the longest time resisted Charlemagne, and even after the baptism of the lands, continued to worship the original Saxon gods for a long time. In the Slavic Chronicle, Helmold from the 8th century and up to 1172, the following characterization is given. The Nordalbings are three tribes, Sturmers, Golzats, and Ditmarshi. They do not differ much among themselves, neither in appearance nor in language. They all observe the Saxon law and Christian faith, although at the same time, because of the neighborhood with pagans, they are in the habit of indulging in robbery and plunder. They honor the custom of hospitality. Stealing and giving generously is considered praiseworthy among the Golsats, and a man who cannot get loot is considered careless and ignominious. Before the Frankish conquest of the Saxons, the nobility in the Saxon tribes was nominal and had no special privileges. Even the leader of the army in case of war was elected by the tribal council. And only after the conquest of territories by Charlemagne did the Saxons have a written code of laws called Saxon Law. The territorial division established by the Saxons continued to exist even after the conquest of territories by the Franks. The Romans called such division pagami. That is the smallest administrative territorial unit in ancient Rome. The ancient Germans called areas Ga, meaning the territory with a frame of natural boundaries and homogeneous landscape where one tribe lived. The Saxons were excellent warriors and hunters of the ancient era. Their skills and abilities helped as well as other nomadic tribes to defeat in battle even superior in numbered troops of opponents. And only by the 8th century the division into estates and the release of part of the male population from military duty allowed the Franks to defeat the Saxons. The Saxons lived not only in what is now Denmark, the Netherlands, Germany and Great Britain, but also in what is known as Transylvania. Unlike all other places, the Saxons did not conquer Transylvania. They were invited there by the Hungarian king to protect the borders from other nomadic tribes. The Saxons replaced in these territories the extremely ambitious German knights who had repeatedly participated in the Crusades. Over time, they achieved success in many areas of society. As a result, the modern culture of Transylvania. Privileges granted to the new defenders by the king at the legislative level helped the Saxons to transfer the cultural heritage to the new territories. In the new lands, the Saxons were quite successful in farming and trading. 
The architecture of the Saxons differed little from that of other territories of ancient Germany. As we know, nomads did not need fortified houses. But in the 5th century ad, increasingly succumbing to assimilation with other tribes and peoples, they became similar to civilized neighbors. A striking example of this influence were half-timbered houses. Their construction was based on stone foundations, and the floors themselves were boxes stacked on top of each other, whose axes often did not coincide with each other, and to connect the floors with each other used connecting frames. But the Saxons improved such a dwelling, which resulted in the absence of connecting frames. This kind of building created the illusion of unity of the space of the first and second floor. Saxon peasant houses can be considered prototypes of some modern building styles. Since the Saxons struggled for existence and territory almost throughout their early history, it is not surprising that they created structures of unique importance. Basilicas with absolutely identical side facades, as well as internal longitudinal rooms crossing the main hall, belong to their authorship. The cores in them were located along three walls. Another type characteristic of the Saxons was hall churches. This type of building was characterized by equal values in length, height, and width. But of course, the palm of primacy in church architecture belongs to the fortress churches in Transylvania. Since the Saxon nobility was not particularly revered there, the central part of the fortifications was occupied not by the ruler's house, but by the church. The uniqueness of these fortresses is not only in the central structure, but also in the structure of the walls themselves. They were tiered dwellings and not without reason can be considered a prototype of modern apartment buildings. This phenomenon was possible because of the thickness of the fortress walls of 30 or more meters. Since the Saxons were nomads, the great migration of peoples of the 3rd and 4th centuries ad did not leave them in place. Part of the Saxons, together with the Angles and Utes, moved to Britain. Archaeological excavations of that period testified to the partial assimilation of the Saxons with the Angles and Utes. Their broad daggers were modified, becoming shorter or longer. The tribes had great mobility in their movements. The swampy terrain, which they overcame from the moment of being in Germany, led to the fact that the Saxons almost did not use bulky battle axes. Swords were used more than the Celts, but did not interfere with the ease of maneuvering in battle. Ringlets were very rare and belonged mostly to the wealthy. Even in military tactics, the Saxons retained relative freedom and continued to pursue basic principles. They destroyed and plundered conquered villages and gave most of it to their leader. Their clothing was sturdy, often made from the skins of animals they killed, but did not restrain the movements of the warriors themselves. In other words, they were like a second skin. Because of their dispersed nature, the Saxons were not coordinated by a single command and were often defeated by the Britons, whose came, according to English legends once invited the Saxons to fight the Picts. The social system of the Saxons was based on a patriarchal community. Most often the oldest man of the tribe was chosen as a judge, to whom everyone listened, his word was the law. Any member of the tribe was obliged to fulfill it. However, to bring a child into the clan it was not enough for a woman to confirm that she had given birth to a child from a given man. The man was obliged to redeem the child, due to the absence of the institution of marriage at that time. The Saxons sacredly honored male ties, both on the father's and mother's side. With the improvement of weapons, there was no trace left of the Saxons' mobile advantage. It is hard to say exactly when, but they began to form the institution of royalty. The reason for this was the fact that the nomadic way of life gradually outlived itself, forcing the tribes to settle on the land. And as it is known, the peasants must clearly observe the terms of sowing and harvesting, otherwise there will be famine. The need for alliances led the Saxons to begin organizing a more classical institution of power. Initially, the king remained an elected person, but held office until his death. The institution of royal power had a sacral character. The lineage of the king was necessarily derived from one of the gods. However, to explain the death of the king, the Saxons invented a statement about the two hypostases of the monarch. According to this statement, the first hypostasis was immortal and was a divine part and the second was an ordinary human body. Due to the election of the king after the death of the previous one, bloody wars for power were quite often. This is not surprising, because the property of the monarch is inviolable, and by the 8th century the king receives almost unlimited power over his subjects. The Saxons used runes as their writing system. However, their reading was quite complicated. Not infrequently happened and so. The word consisted of five or eight runes, but the semantic load carried only three or four signs. Runes betrayed a huge magical value. 
in order to confuse the evil spirits in the amulet in addition to the main rune, which had the task of attracting success in the life of its owner, inscribed a few more. Runes were used for divination. A prominent person in Anglo-Saxon history was Alfred the Great. As the son of the ruler of Wessex, he visited the courts of other European rulers and as a sponge absorbed knowledge about the state and social order. Alfred was even presented to the Pope, who anointed him to rule. Everything new, with a look at the situation, the future ruler of Britain tried to apply to the lands under his authority. That is why, after the death of his brother sat on the throne, the young ruler waged endless wars, continued to improve the social and political order of the country. Thus he decided that some peasants could farm even during the wars. It was Alfred the Great who stopped the Danish and Viking invasion of England. After the wars, he threw all his energies and resources into rebuilding the country and educating the population. Under his scepter, Alfred united quite large territories and established new laws on them. The king took as a basis the oral rules of the tribes and adapted them to the European law of that period. Therefore, Alfred the Great is rightly considered the first English king. Thus, the most mysterious tribes influenced all spheres of life of the ancient European society, and their famous descendants, such as Johann Sebastian Bach, Martin Luther, Johann Gettlich Ficht, Clara Zetkin entered the world history forever. What do you know about the Saxons? Do you think their influence on the culture of Europe was great?